Well, hello everyone. My name is the Reverend Charlotte Cheshire, and I am priest in charge of Christ Church Maldbrain and St. James Rothorpe in Huddersfield, West Yorkshire. I'm also the coordinating Anglican chaplain to the University of Huddersfield. Now, many of you will have gotten used to seeing my videos that are posted usually on Sundays for Sunday worship and might be a little bit confused as to why I'm actually posting a video today. But I'm sure, like me, the vast majority of you will have been watching the Prime Minister's announcement last night that we are once again in a UK-wide national lockdown because the rate of infections from the new variant on coronavirus have risen so high that the NHS is at risk of being overwhelmed. Now, I wonder how you're actually feeling about that news today. Perhaps some of you might be shocked and in disbelief that we're in this place again. Some of you might feel that it's not necessary and that it would be better just to carry on with life as normal. Others of you will believe that the lockdown has come just in time, while still others may believe that it has come too late. In other words, everybody will be in different circumstances today, but the one thing that I can almost guarantee that a vast majority of us have in common is stress because this has been an immensely difficult year. And for all that we were celebrating on getting rid of 2020 in hopes that things would improve in 2021, well, here we are again. And that's not an easy place to be. So as I was thinking about it, I was wondering what I might be able to say that might be able to offer a little bit of food for thought, maybe dare I say even a little bit of comfort. And what came to me is a particular piece of writing that sometimes described as a poem, other times is described as prose, that is really very well known in the circles of those with special or additional needs. And the poem that I'm talking about is called Welcome to Holland, and it was written in 1987 by Emily Pearl Kingsley. Now, this particular piece of writing was written as a way of trying to help those who don't have the experience of raising children with additional needs to help them understand what it's like to walk that particular journey. And as many of you who know me personally will know, my own son, who you can see in the pictures in the background here, has quite a few different disabilities. So that particular poem has a great deal of personal meaning to me. But as I was thinking about these circumstances of lockdown and the circumstances of the pandemic that all of us are in at the moment, this particular piece of writing actually occurred to me. And I thought that at the moment, it actually has some wider resonance than just for those who are walking the particular, particular journey of living with additional needs or disabilities or whatever phrase you would feel most comfortable using. So what I would like to do, for those of you who might be unfamiliar with this piece of writing, I'm going to read it first, and then I'd like to offer a couple of reflections, hopefully a little bit of food for thought on it for you. So this is the piece of writing called Welcome to Holland, and it was written by Emily Pearl Kingsley in 1987. And here it goes. I'm often asked to describe the experience of raising a child with a disability, to try to help people who have not shared that unique experience to understand it, to imagine how it would feel. It's like this. When you're going to have a baby, it's like planning a fabulous vacation trip to Italy. You buy a bunch of guidebooks and you make your wonderful you plans. Kidding? The Colosseum, the Michelangelo oh, David, the gondolas in Venice, you may learn some handy phrases in Italian, and it's all very exciting. After months of eager anticipation, the day finally comes. You pack your bags and off you go. Several hours later, the plane lands. The stewardess comes in and says, welcome to Holland. Holland, you say, what do you mean, Holland? I signed up for Italy. I'm supposed to be in Italy all my life. I've dreamed of going to Italy. But there's been a change in the flight plan. They've landed in Holland, and there you must stay. 
The important thing is that they haven't taken you to some kind of horrible, disgusting or filthy place full of pestilence, famine and disease. It's just a different place. So you must go out and buy new guidebooks and you must learn a whole new language and you will meet a whole new group of people you would never otherwise have met. It's just a different pace. It's slower paced than Italy, less flashy than Italy. But after you've been there for a while and you catch your breath, you look around and you begin to notice that Holland has windmills, Holland has tulips, Holland even has Rembrandts. But everyone you know is busy coming and going from Italy and they're all bragging about what a wonderful time they had there. And for the rest of your life, you will say, yes, that's where I was supposed to go. That's what I had planned. And the pain of that will never, ever, ever go away. Because the loss of that dream is a very significant loss. But if you spend your life mourning the fact that you didn't get to Italy, you may never be free to enjoy the very special, very lovely things about Holland. Now, as I said, that particular piece of writing was specifically directed to those who have children and ultimately discover that their child has some form of disability, which means that their life plans have to change. And the understanding that it doesn't mean their life plans are worse, it just means that they're different and they have to learn a new language. But I'm actually thinking that this particular piece of writing has a great deal of relevance to us right now in the midst of this pandemic and yet another lockdown. You could quite easily argue that it's a bit of a sore subject to talk about travel at all, whether that travel is to Italy, Holland or anywhere else, since we're not doing a great deal of that right now. But it's more about planning yeah, to go to one place, planning to be in one place, planning to be with certain people, planning to spend your life in a certain way. And then suddenly, through no fault of your own, the circumstances change yeah, and you end up finding yourself in a different place with different people and in different circumstances. And that, to me, describes an awful lot of what many of our lives have been like for the past year. Each one of us may have had certain plans, plans to spend time with particular people, plans perhaps to work in a certain way, plans maybe to socialize, to go on holidays, to go on trips, or even just to keep your head above water by being able to work, being able to get out of the house. And all of us in one way or another have had those plans through no fault of our own changed as businesses have had to shut down, as so many workers have been furloughed or have lost their jobs, while yet other workers, particularly key workers, work harder than ever and under very, very difficult circumstances as they try to keep on keeping on. We've had circumstances of students whose entire plans have been thrown up in the air and changed, whether through having to learn online rather than learning from home or from schools, I should say. Those university students that have really, really struggled with whether or not they have to keep paying for their residences, even if they're not able to use them, are they able to go back and to visit family and friends or not? There have been so many difficult circumstances. And of course, perhaps the most difficult of all are those tragedies of people who have lost their lives to this pandemic and those left behind who have mourned them, that had plans to continue spending time with those people for a number of years yet, and suddenly you can't. It is a grief. It's a very, very real grief. So what do we do with it? Do we freeze? Do we stop? Do we just mourn and look at all the dreadful things about the circumstances we're in now? Well, we can do that if we want to. And in certain circumstances, that's legitimate, particularly for those who are grieving to be in a dark and a difficult place. But at the same time, I think the path, dare I say to sanity, 
the path to strength, the path to being able to carry on despite the circumstances we're all in, is somehow being able to find and to experience the joy and the beauty in the place that we're in now. Rather than spending all of our time mourning over the plans we did have, over the places we were going to go, over the people we were going to be with, to find ways to experience beauty and joy in where we are now. For me, one of the things that I do to remember that, and those who know me personally will know, that I always have tulips somewhere in or around my house. Whether that's real tulips, whether that's a picture of them. At this moment in time, I have some lamps in the shape of tulips. And the reason for that is always to remind me of this, that I had plans to be in one place and I've ended up being in a different place. And to remind me at the times when that feels dark or when that feels difficult, that the place I'm in isn't necessarily a bad place. It's just different. So I'd like to encourage you, if at all possible, if you are feeling as though you had all of those plans metaphorically to go to Italy and you found yourself to be in Holland, look around and find where are the things of beauty in the place that you're in. Where are the metaphorical tulips, windmills and Rembrandts? Maybe that might be in having the time to go for a walk in the countryside that you just wouldn't otherwise have. Maybe it's even the time if you're a parent Aww. to spend a little bit of extra time with your children, whether you plan to or not, and whether that's difficult or not, because those children yeah, need comfort too. Oh no, so hard. I know it is so hard, isn't it, my darling? Maybe it's just about finding somehow the beauty and the joy in the place that you're in, rather than spending all of your time looking at the place that you intended to be. And I hope somehow today, in the coming days, in the coming weeks, even in the coming months, however long this lasts for, that you might be able to reflect on those words of Italy versus Holland, of the plans that we had versus the life that we're living, and find ways somehow to keep on based on finding the beauty in your life as it is. Be well, stay safe, stay home, and stay strong. We're all in this together. Let's on keep on carrying on. Take care.